So Mike, we're here doing a quick demo of the Divar IP system manager. It's available with the 4000, 6000, and we'll be with the 7000 series units. Either end users, system integrators, people there for service have to find out what versions are running, how the system's doing, how the status is. What's Bosch introducing with System Manager that kind of makes that whole process a lot more manageable? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Brad. So like you mentioned, System Manager is a brand new feature on 4,000 and 6,000 units. You can see here that the standard kiosk screen has an additional icon for System Manager. It is locked out by admin access, so it's not something that your everyday operator will be able to get into. We've already logged in there, so let me show you what that looks like. We can toggle over to it. We've got some information here under software packages. We can see the name of the unit itself. If you have a network that has a multitude of DVAR IPs on it, you can identify them by their Windows tag callout. You have the family that it belongs to and the exact CTN that you're using, so you can identify which hard drives are in it, et cetera, what kind of uh, assortment you have installed. Also, the serial number. So if you have any kind of need for tech support, or if you just want to catalog your products, you're able to do so just from this interface. Going down, we can actually see the software packages that are installed on the DVAR IP unit. We can see the version of BVMS that we're running currently with 11.1.1 and the patches that have been installed there as well. System Manager 2.0 is also installed in a two-part uh, commander and executor here. It actually, by default, installs a couple of BVMS patches to bring you up to speed and gives you some additional capabilities with remote system management, which I know is something you wanted to also talk about today. The Super Doctor service, Transcoder service, VRM and VSG, all subcomponents of BVMS, the versions that they're running, and the status that they're up and live. Up at the top with 2.0, we can see that we've got a remote portal connection tab. This lets us actually connect the DVAR IP for the first time into remote portal and actually gain some insight into that from when we're off-prem. Uh, standard login credentials, it's nothing new, so if you have done any kind of services with us in the past, cameras online through remote portal, it's your standard login. I've got that running on a separate machine here for a virtual. Let me show you what it looks like. So we can go to our standard systems tab here in remote portal. All right, so here we've got the standard screen with our virtual system here. Traditionally, you would see a DVAR IP. Today, we're going to run a virtual demo because I'm actually able to simulate some of the failures, which is kind of what you want to see when you're looking at health overview and performance. There's three pillars to remote service. It's going to be uh, your inventory management, your health management, and your update management. First, with inventory management, we can see here that we've got the system, the serial numbers brought in from System Manager, as well as the install location. And that's all customizable. So if you've got multiple buildings on one campus, you can do building one, or building two, building three, et cetera, for your systems. Going down here, we can see the actual DVAR IP system, some indicators of connectivity, health services, and updates. Everything's green across the board here. Down here with our cameras, we can see all of the devices or sensors that are connected to the DVAR IP as well. You can see the platform that they're running, the firmware version, the IP address, the MAC address. Connectivity is good on all of these. We do have an alert on a health indicator. With the virtual demo, we can see that the recording just isn't set up, so that's why it's throwing us that. So inventory management. We can go to the top. We can generate an inventory report. What that does is dump a report in our report section, which is hyperlinked here, but it's also right up here in the header. We can see all of the reports that we've generated to date, all of the total items, successes, failures, and ongoings. We can go into them. We can get statistics on the system itself, serial number, again, all of the things that we've just gone over, including all of the specifics for the cameras, their status, and what IP addresses they're consuming. So if we have multitude of sites, we can pull these reports and we can go ahead and export them. We can have a total inventory catalog of all the DVAR IP and subcomponents that we have installed in the field. The next part is going to be health monitoring. So we can see here that we had some health indicators on camera connections. What we can do here is actually simulate a failure. I've got the master control for the demo here. I can set this to critical and we're going to get a CPU failure. Under the system itself here, we can see that we have all the sub-process running that, sub, uh, that Super Doctor is actually monitoring. The fans, the CPU temperature, chassis intrusion, hard drives, etc. In a moment, when this populates, we're going to see that there's a failure on the system and we can see exactly what's wrong. The cameras also have the same information available to them. This definitely takes about 30 seconds or so, so we'll keep moving. We'll talk about updates while that failure triggers. 
Here, with updates, we can go in and select the system, the DVAR IP itself. We can see all of the BVMS patches that are available, and we can go ahead and download and install those. We can install all of them, or we can install one of them. It depends on what our needs are and what uh, hot fixes or patches we may need. Of course, if there's a cybersecurity update, make sure you go ahead and install that. With the cameras themselves, we're able to go down here, and we can select one or multiple cameras, and we can update them all at once as well. If there's new firmware available, it's going to tell us. We can see the CPP platform that it's running and the firmware that's available, and we can go ahead and update that. If multiple versions of firmware are available, you can select from them which one you'd like to go to. Going back to our health notification, we can see here that we've got a red indicator that's popped up for a failure. We can see here that the temperature has gone off at 39 degrees Celsius. That's a pretty good indicator that the CPU fan has probably died. We need to get somebody on site to fix that problem. The bonus from this is we have proactive insight, right? Before we roll a tuck, we know that something's going on with the CPU here. We can probably bring another fan, or if a hard drive is going bad, we can bring that additional hard drive on site. So, yeah, I think I think that also, not only that, but that may be an indicator that the system's running in an environment that's not cool enough, or you know, it's not. They don't have air conditioning. Maybe there's some other elements to this that's not necessarily unit, but could be other factors of the environment as well. Absolutely, and it's all about identifying issues before you have them. Before you know you lose recordings, you lose cameras, valuable footage. When you go back in the next day and you don't have the footage that you want, that's what this is for. Yeah, I think this is fantastic because like you said, inventory, health, and updates all managed from one pane of glass for not only the DVAR IP unit, but all the attached cameras. You get all that information, like I said, on one pane of glass. So it really introduces a whole new level of management for end users or you know integrators out there in the field. Absolutely. Mike, thank you very much for your time and showing us not only system manager, but a demo of the remote system management utilities. And uh, hope you have a fantastic show. All right, thank you, Brad, I appreciate Thanks. it.